Hello friends, Todd Matshikiza Google Doodle for celebrating Todd Matshikiza. Today's Doodle celebrates South African jazz pianist, composer, and journalist Todd Matshikiza, who is widely considered to be one of the most significant musical critics and melodists of his era. On this day in 1956, his commissioned cantata Usholo piece, was played by the orchestra at the 70th Johannesburg Festival. Google is showing Todd Matshikiza's doodle in many country. Matshikiza was born in Queenstown, South Africa, on March 7, 1921. His mother, a singer, and his father, an organist, taught Matshikiza and his six siblings piano while they grew up. He attended St. Peter's College in Johannesburg and went on to earn his music and teaching diplomas. Putting these degrees to work, he taught high school English and math and composed choral works and songs such as Hamburg Hall. In 1947, Matt Schickiser moved back to Johannesburg, where he taught and eventually established his own private school, the Todd Matt Schickiser School of Music. He taught piano, his forte being jazz music. Matt Schickiser's passion for jazz music and journalism came together when he became one of the first writers at Drum Magazine. He wrote a column about the artistry and evolution of jazz and one on township life called With the Lid Off. Several of his articles from the latter column are immortalized in the book With the Lid Off, South African Insights from Home and Abroad 1959-2000. As a composer, he is most famous for his work on the song Quickly in Love, which plays in the 2013 film Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, and the score for two theatrical productions, King King and Mikumbane. The all-black jazz musical King Kong premiered in 1958 and was a smash hit, spreading as far as London. The musical Mikumbane, 1960, with compositions by Matt Schickiza and Alan Patton was equally powerful, but the political and satirical commentary about the black experience in Cato Manor in the 1950s limited its popularity. He played piano, was a freelance journalist, and presented radio programs in London for a few years before moving to Zambia, where he worked as a broadcaster and a music archivist. His story lives on through his autobiography Chocolates for My Wife, 1961, which describes apartheid in South Africa and his move to London. We will regularly update on this. Thanks for watching this video.